So after trial by fire, <clears throat> due to a series of circumstances that I'm not really going to get into here, Steve Perry left Journey. And for, I would imagine most people, it seemed like, okay, this is the end of Journey. But it wasn't. It was just the beginning of a new era. How would Journey recoup from the loss of Steve Perry? Well, by finding another amazing singer. Welcome back to Pixel Positive Music, where we are going over the history of the band Journey, one album at a time. This is part 11 of that series, covering the first album with singer Steve Algieri, uh, an album called Arrival. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on any of the future content that we have planned, including the last few albums of this um, awesome series that we've been doing, as well as our upcoming review of Journey's new album, Freedom. So let's get into it. Look, there is no way that you can actually like completely successfully replace a singer like Steve Perry. And I mean, who could realistically expect the band to be able to do that? Um, they did the best they could, and the person that they found, I think, was very, very, very good. Um, the first singer in Journey to replace Steve Perry, or to follow Steve Perry, is a man named Steve Algieri. Um, Steve Algieri is a very good singer. He has a similar style to Steve Perry. If you hear him sing Journey tracks, he sounds very similar to Steve Perry. But when he sings his own tracks, like tracks that he made with Journey... Um, or even just his solo music, he kind of takes his own style. And I think that Steve Algieri is a very, very, very good fit for Journey. Um, he was in the band, he joined in 1998, and the band embarked on their first tour after Trial by Fire. The I believe it was called the Vacations Over Tour. And they played some music from Trial by Fire, from Raised on Radio, stuff like that. And um, after it became pretty apparent that Steve Algieri was going to work out, um, the band decided to record an album. And it's also worth noting that we also had a lineup change on the drums. Um, when Steve Perry left the band, um, Steve Smith also left the band. So Neil brought in one of his old buddies, um, a man named Dean Castronovo. And Dean Castronovo is an incredible drummer, and he's also an incredible singer. His contributions to the band are vast, I think. He's very, very good um, in this post-Steve Perry era. Dean is very, very good at helping to fill in the gaps um, as far as like vocals are concerned. He does excellent harmonies, excellent backing vocals, and he sings lead on a lot of tracks as well during live performances. I mean, he's a very good singer. So the band, in a way, had, they had a lot of shoes to fill here. They needed to replace Steve Perry, and they needed to replace Steve Smith, both very talented musicians. Um, and so, yeah, I think that they did a very good job bringing in Steve Augieri and Dean Castronovo. So the year 2000 and 2001 in some areas, they released the album Arrival, which is a perfect name. I mean, it's Arrival, it's an Arrival of a new era for the band and of the new singer and of the new members. And right off the bat, they prove that they can be journey without Steve Perry. And I think that obviously I don't you know. I wasn't following the band when this album came out because I was four years old, but I would imagine that everyone was kind of waiting for this track um, with in this album with Beta breath. Now they had done a song with Algeri um for a movie in 98, I believe. Um, so we we had heard, you know, everyone had heard Algieri on recording before with the band, but this is the first full album since Steve Perry left. Could they do it? Well, Higher Place is the opening track of Arrival, and it's very good. It's I think it's one of the best post-Steve Perry tracks from the band. Um, it's all your typical Journey stuff. I mean, it's catchy lyrics, um, strong guitars, good piano work. I mean, it just works. The lyrics are great. And you just listen to the, the chorus here. Um, and I try. 
I try to reason why. Don't you know I can't go on this way? Baby, please don't walk away. There is this place where I toss away my pride so you can see that I'm the one to take you to a higher place this time. I mean, it's... It, it, when you hear Steve Augeri sing it, and you see him on stage singing it, there's great videos of him doing the song live. I mean, this is a journey track. Um, it's different than the Steve Perry era, but it's still very good. Um, the band is able to make up the difference in a lot of ways uh, on this album. And this album, I think, for Journey and... It was more about proving that they could do it, that they could do an album without Steve Perry, and that while Steve Perry made incredible contributions to this band that cannot be overstated and that cannot be overlooked, he is not the whole band. There are still very talented musicians in this band. So I think overall, Arrival is a good album. I don't think it's a great, like, phenomenal piece of music. Uh, as an album, I think there are some standout, a few standout moments here. Um, primarily in the first three tracks, Higher Place, and then we have a beautiful, beautiful ballad called All the Way. And then we have um, another really great track called Signs of Life. Um, I think these three tracks are probably the three strongest tracks on the album. Uh, they're very good. Um, this is a very ballad heavy album there's not a lot of rock tracks on this album and which is fine for me i i don't necessarily need a lot of rock tracks i just love good music um but the band obviously had a problem with it because when they, re they released the album first in japan and when they brought it to the u.s they actually um changed some songs out for some more rockier tracks so I, you know i think the the problem with arrival and this is a problem that um, the next album, Generations, has as well, is there's not a lot of memorable moments here. Um, there's, I mean, it's, it's difficult because the band is kind of, they're out of the commercial era at this point. There are no hits on Arrival or on most of the upcoming music from the band, and that's fine. There don't need to be hits at this point. The band has had so much success, but... Arrival is a difficult album to place really in the um, in the grand scheme of things because it's it's just not super memorable in a lot of the music and that's not the fault of Steve Algieri or Dean or any of really any of them these guys I think that they just um, they were still trying to find their footing after Steve Perry left and so we get a lot of ballads we get some really good tracks like Living to Do. Um, that have really great guitar work, a lot of good acoustic work on some of these tracks, good piano work, but nothing that really like knocks it out of the park, in my opinion, at least. Um, I know as far as the uh, four albums that we've gotten post-Steve Perry, uh, so far, of course, and that's not counting Freedom, um, I would say this is probably the, the best, or the second, probably the second best. Um, I would probably push Ev Revelation a little bit over the edge there. Um, but this is a good album. It's not a phenomenal album, but it's a very good album. It's an important album in Journey's discography because it is that first album without Steve Perry, um, after the first album post Steve Perry rather, because there were obviously albums before Steve Perry, but it's the first post Steve Perry album. So the band had to prove to not only the fans, but to themselves that they could do it. And I think they absolutely did it. Um, Steve Algieri does a phenomenal job. He sings very, very well. He hits very high notes. He sounds very good. He sounds confident on stage. He's very confident at this point. So, I mean, Steve Algieri, while he was, he didn't really work out in the long, long term, and we'll get to that in the next couple videos, he was perfect for this moment. He's very good. He does a good job of sounding like Steve Perry, and he has a he does a very good job of sounding like Steve Algieri. So, I mean, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about this album just because, um, like I said, it's a good album, but it's not a super memorable album, in my opinion. So, I mean, what do you guys think of Arrival? Do you agree? Um, do you think I'm being a little bit too hard on it? Do you think that Out Arrival's actually a really great album? Do you think Arrival sucks? I mean, I want to know what you guys think. Definitely leave a comment uh, below telling me your thoughts of Arrival. And if you were a longtime Journey fan, 
what was it like when Steve Perry left and how did you feel about Ajiri? Were you sold when you heard him or did it take you a while or were you never sold? Obviously, let's keep it civil um, when it comes to the journey after Steve Perry stuff. I see the comments and all the journey videos about, oh, journey isn't journey without Steve Perry. Journey is always journey. And honestly, the only person who could leave journey for me that would leave me to say, okay, this isn't really journey is Neil Sean, because he is the consistent member from start to present day. So, I mean, journey is definitely still journey. They just, they're just different. And of course they're different. It's, They've had a long and storied career, so let's, you know, we'll keep it civil when we talk about these, the post-Steve Perry albums, because that's the whole point of this, is that we want to be able to talk about music and have fun doing it, and it's not fun when people start fighting, so um, definitely leave comments about your guys' thoughts on Rival, Steve Algieri, um, if you like the video, hit that like video, and if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button, we are coming to the end of this series, uh, it's been a lot of fun, and we will be doing a full review of Freedom on July 8th. So I am definitely looking forward to hearing that album, and I hope you guys are looking forward to the review. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys on the next video.